you are good God. Lord, we magnify your holy name. Lord, we say you are glorious in beauty and in holiness. Father, we thank you. Father, we bow before your holy name. Father, you are good and we bless you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen.
Therefore, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise will continually always be on my lips. Beloved, once again, it feels so good to welcome you to the special evening service with our dear chairman, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost Worldwide, Apostle Eric Yameche. We are so grateful to God for all our viewers who are joining us on our various social media platforms on the Facebook page of our dear chairman, APS.Eric Nyameche. Those who are joining us on PENTVGH and then those who are joining us at COPHQ. We are also welcoming those who are connecting to us on YouTube at the Church of Pentecost. And then those who are watching us on Pen TV, it's all about Jesus. And then those who are joining us on Atenka TV, we are grateful to Atenka TV, Atenka FM, for the continuous media partnership as far as these programs are concerned. Beloved in the Lord, two weeks ago, we had a fiery experience in this place when in the name of Jesus, we saw beddings rolled away. We saw lives transformed. And the praise reports that we received is indicative of the fact that indeed, when the name of Jesus is mentioned, every knee bows. These are the wonderful experiences we are having here at the special evening service with the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. We trust God that any time we make ourselves ready, God is also ready through his servant to be a great blessing. And tonight will be one of such kind. I'm so privileged once again to introduce to minister to us the chairman of the Church of Pentecost Worldwide, Apostle Eric Yameche. Great to be back once again. We are looking at what it means to have effective worship. We have studied that in, we need to create an environment that God will, be, will encounter his people. That in doing that, we need people I have described as elders. Elders like Moses who themselves have experienced God. And know what it means to go without the presence of God. Now if you go without the presence of God, 
to them it will amount to nothing and in our generation we should be tired of lukewarm service and the lost it brings the elders these elders are not only to create an environment for god to encounter his people but they are also to feed the, the sheep it is how in Penifui, as I said, we bought coin to Hokeke. I am maybe fast to Asia and Crawford. Name of as I said, one yenny, name mine. So I'm looking at feed my sheep. It's in the air cassafa horn, they say, Yenny meanwhile, feed my sheep. Yenny meanwhile, feed my sheep. Yenny meanwhile. So we are saying that these elders are not just to create an environment, a spiritual environment for God to encounter his people, but they are supposed to feed the sheep. Of whom the Lord God has made them, of which the Lord God has made them overseers. It is some penny for you know, and says, Oh, Bob, crying to walk a cow, you may be fast so, and then in crop for a D, a shea. No, as I said, what year in crop for what to mean, and you mean, when you made you want to see what I said before. As chapter 20, verse 28. As much when you manage to know what you know what you keep watch over yourself and all the flock of which the holy spirit has made you overseers be shepherds of the church of god which he bought with his own blood be shepherds over the flock of, over the church of god which he bought with his own blood. Now in John chapter 21 verse 15. I want us to go to John chapter 21. We want to examine the instructions that Jesus gave Peter. Concerning the feeding of the flock. John 21 from 15. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? Simon, you Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John. Do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time. Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Now, Peter had denied Jesus three times. Jesus asked him three times to reaffirm his love for him. And then recommissioned him. This was necessary because it says by his own confession and denial he had taken himself out of the disciples why am i saying this it's just because of what the angel told mary mark chapter 16 and verse 7 mark 16 7 but go tell his disciples and peter he is going ahead of you into galilee there you will see him just as he told you but go tell his disciples and peter i mean tell his disciples should have been enough 
but it is the angel said and peter <laughs> so the, the, he is trying to suggest that but this time peter was not a disciple <laughs> because he himself said i don't know him now after the resurrection this was right in peter's mind so when jesus asked him the first time do you love me yes i do then the second time do you love me yes i do the third time because something was going on in peter's mind the bible said peter was disturbed he wasn't disturbed because Jesus was asking him too many questions. Because it was number three, like he he did the number three. So in his spirit, he was really disturbed. That is why the Bible says he was disturbed. Jesus, Lord, you know I love you. You see, if he were to be a Ghanaian young man, he would have said, you know I love you. Actually, that day. Actually, that day. But you know what? You know I love you. But you see, the love of the resurrection was able to cover his sins. And then he commissioned him. See, what is important in this study? Is the commission to feed the flock. To feed is not just to give food and water. To feed is not just about food and water. But to satisfy. Members come to church. Before all kinds of expectations and desires. They come with burdens and questions. We need to answer their questions. Meet their needs. And solve their problems. They have to come to church with these burdens. With questions. But they should leave us satisfied. To feed is to gratify. Give pleasure by satisfying desires. To feed is nourish. To strengthen, to build up. And to promote health and growth. To feed is to provide with the necessary materials for development. So when members come to church, it is the elders' responsibility to feed them by providing the necessary materials for their development. See, the ultimate intention is this is to bring the flock up to the point where they are beneficial and productive it doesn't matter how they come to church but in our hands we should be able to feed them so that they become beneficial and productive because Jesus wants us to be fruitful what is the nature of the sheep or the flock or the people he was and we are to feed see the business of feeding the flock in this new dispensation was committed to Peter and by extension to all true elders of the church and this is drawn from Jeremiah the prophecy of Jeremiah in the book of Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15 so now we are looking at the nature of the flock so let's trace it 
to examine the nature of the flock he was and we are to feed Jeremiah chapter 3 I'll start from verse 15 through 18 then I will give you shepherds after my own hands who feed you with knowledge and understanding. Some version says, will lead you with knowledge and understanding. In those days, so Jeremiah was speaking ahead of time. He was speaking into the future. In those days, when your numbers have increased greatly, declares the Lord, people will no longer see the ark of the covenant of the Lord. It will never, it will never enter their minds or be remembered. It will not be missed. Now, what No, will another one be made? Now, what you At that time, they will call Jerusalem, Jerusalem the throne of the Lord. And all nations will gather in Jerusalem to honor the name of the Lord. No longer will they follow the stubbornness of the evil of their evil hearts in those days the people of Judah will join the people of Israel and together they will come from a northern land to the land I gave your ancestors as an inheritance you know the real meaning of this passage even though ultimately it's referring to the millennium is related to our age even as even at the time of Jeremiah see the ark of covenant was was not remembered it was long forgotten you see the last time the ark of covenant was mentioned it was in second chronicles chapter 5 it was when the temple of solomon was completed and they, they moved the ark from the tent to the temple that was the last time uh, from that time any reference any mention of the ark is just a reference to that one so Jeremiah was saying that there's going to come a time that the ark of covenant will long be forgotten it will not be missed a new one was not going to be made. It will not be missed. And I'm saying that at the time he was prophesying, the Ark of Covenant was long forgotten. And a new one has not been made. The Ark was no longer the hope of Israel nor was it the desire of the nation now let's pay attention to verse 18 of Jeremiah 3 says that in those days the people of Judah will, give, will, will join the people of Israel and together now we're free. They will come from we're free. It, we're free. a northern land to the so land I gave your ancestors as an inheritance. So in those days, the people of Judah and Israel, these brothers will come together and they will come from a northern land, a far away far away place now we'll be free if you pay as i said and be gathered back on the land that was given to them as for inheritance. 
At this time they were scattered. But they shall come from the land, they shall come to the land of promise. From all the places where their sins have driven them to. This was a reference to Isaiah chapter 11. So what Jeremiah was saying was a reference to what I Isaiah said in chapter 11. From, from verse 10. I want you to pay close attention to this teaching. I don't want you to miss anything. We are looking at the nature of the sheep he was to feed or we are to feed. In that day, the root of Jesse. Some versions will say the root of David. Now this Jesse is the father of David. David will stand as a banner for the peoples. When the Bible says peoples, he is referring to the Gentiles. So the nations will rally to him. When he said the nations, he's talking about all other nations outside Israel. So the nations will rally to him. And his resting place will be glorious. In that day, the root of Jesse. Yes, Now let's go to verse. 1 and 2 of the same chapter 11, Isaiah chapter 11. Mwame yanko, odifu Isaiah nguma no tidu bako, nchiche mwe di kain nwa eko no. Isaiah 11, 1 and 2. Isaiah nguma no tidu bako, nchiche mwe bako. Now a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. Na dufro befi fri yezea dun sinu. From his root, a branch will bear fruit. Na dubai efri ni hini mu aswaba. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. Now, when we are talking about a, a root from the stump of Jay Z, as if the, the, the tree of Jay Z has been cut, but there will be a shoot will still come from the stump. It is as what happened when so, uh, God decided that uh, the kingdom was going to be taken from the house uh, from Israel, from the house of David. It Yet, he will raise somebody who will come like the king David. Now, he was going to do that, but for the sake of David, he will still have a remnant. So that's why the Bible says a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse that has been cut. From his root, a branch will bear fruit. Now this branch is within a sentence, but it is capital B. Now the minor. This man. So, <laughs> we will talk about this capital B branch next week. God willing. Then he says that that root. No, I say, sir, that shoot, that that shoot, a branch that will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. You know that people call Jesus son of David. He's a son of David because he comes from the tribe, uh, his root. Then pay attention. The Bible says that the spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. Luke chapter 4. I'll read verse 18. 
Luke 4, 18. Look at St. Paul, 18, 19. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me. Now, this is Jesus. Isaiah said, that shoot. The Spirit of the Lord will be, will rest on him. And then when Jesus entered the temple and they gave him the scroll and he opened to Isaiah, he read what was concerning him and he said the Spirit of the Lord will is on me. But Isaiah has said long ago in chapter 11 and other chapters that the spirit of the Lord will be on him. So we are thinking that when the Bible is talking about the root of Jesse he is talking about Jesus Christ the son of David. So, so let's come back to Isaiah chapter 10 again. Isaiah chapter 11 and then verse 10 again. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him and his resting place will be glorious. In that day, the Lord will reach out his hand a second time to reclaim the surviving remnant of his people from Assyria from lower Egypt from upper Egypt from Cush from Elam from Babylonia from Hamath and from the islands of the Mediterranean Rainier. He will raise a banner for the nations and gather the elders of Israel. He will, as, he will assemble the scattered people of Judah from the four quarters of the earth. Now, what is he trying to say? We have seen that the root of Jesus is Jesus. Yes, he didn't know any yes. He is saying that now I say the 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 nations will rally to him. There will be his desire. Jesus will be the desire of the peoples. Yes, he is going to be the glory of his people Israel. Now obey Israel and Moyam, not the ark. And yet a pam adakano. He is going to put this box thing away. And the adakan will be in chain. In those days when they went to worship, Sabre no sabokosa or kosoria. The the it was because of the ark. All worship was towards the holy of holies. Where there was this small box. It was the desire of the people. People rallied towards it. But there's going to come a time, says Isaiah that the desire of the nations will no longer be the ark but it will be the messiah it will be the messiah the nations will come to him so hold it that the nations will come to him he will not go to the nations but the scripture says they will come to him now the apostle paul now Quoted this passage. That is Isaiah chapter 11. When he was making reference to the Gentiles. In Romans chapter 15. So let's go to Romans 15 verse 12. Romans 15 12. And again Isaiah says. The root of Jesse. Yes, who will spring up and who will arise one will arise to rule over the nation in him the Gentiles will hope it's just like verse 10 and 11 so now Apostle Paul quotes Isaiah 11 
Osmafo Paulo, Akoku Peja, Isaiah, Etidu Bakuno. And then he speaks it or teaches it, saying that the root of Jesse. And I actually chile maka se. Jesse ni hini yon. Will spring up. Obe puye biyo. One will arise. Obe sorry. That is the root of Jesse. Yes, in him, you know. to rule over the nations. In him, the Gentiles will hope. And not the ark. And So Jeremiah was not only prophesying about the reunion of Judah and Israel. But salvation of the Gentiles as well. Because we have said that when Isaiah was prophesying, that he was making reference to when Jeremiah was prophesying, as you say, he was making reference to Isaiah chapter 11. And then Paul quotes Isaiah chapter 11. Saying that it was talking about the Gentiles too. But in Jeremiah's prophecy, he said that the people of Judah and Israel will be gathered together again. And so Paul was, is now saying that when Isaiah was speaking, it was not just about the reunion of Israel and Judah. But the salvation of the Gentiles as well. How was that going to happen? Isaiah 11 verse 11. And I want us to project so that we will read together. Isaiah chapter 11. In that day, the Lord will reach out his hand a second time to reclaim the surviving remnant of his people from Assyria, Lower Egypt, from Upper Egypt, from Cush, from Elam, from Babylonia, from Hamath, and from the islands of the Mediterranean. In that day, the Lord will stretch out his hand the second time to reclaim the surviving remnant of his people. The Lord will stretch out his hand the second time to gather the rest of the nations. That is the nations outside Israel that the Gentiles unto himself. See, this statement suggests that the Lord has stretched his hands before. That is why the scripture is saying that he will stretch out his hand the second time. So when was the first time? And what was the purpose? Because this second time, he says that he will stretch it and bring in the Gentiles. When was the first time? Exodus chapter 3. Verse 19. When was the first time? Exodus 3.19 but, but I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand compels him. So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all the wonders that I will perform amongst them. After that, they will let you go. Let me repeat that. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand compels him. So I will stretch out my hand and strike the Egyptians 
with all the wonders that I will perform among them. After that, he will let you go. See, the deliverance of Israel from the paws of Pharaoh was foretold in Exodus 3 19 and 20. It was fulfilled in Exodus chapter 12. Effectively concluded in Exodus 14. This he did to rescue a nation to himself. Made this nation his very own. Even though the whole world at that time was was and is his. Now let's read Exodus 12. From verse 28. Exodus 12 from verse 28. The Israelites did just what the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron. Now, this is the Passover. At midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn in Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sat on the throne, to the firstborn of the prisoner, who was in the dungeon, and the firstborn of all the livestock as well. Pharaoh and all his officials and the Egyptians got up during the night and there was loud wailing in Egypt. For there was not a house without someone there. During the night, Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Up! leave my people you and the Israelites go worship the Lord as you have re requested take your flocks and heads as you have said and go and also bless me before you go just pray for me that was a mighty hand. We in Basa, but somehow Pharaoh wanted to pursue them and bring them back. The Lord buried them in the Red Sea. Verse 30 of Exodus 14 says this. That day, the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians lying down on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses his servant. When Israel saw the mighty hand of the Lord, so this he did to rescue just a nation called Israel. But God will stretch forth his hand the second time to gather the rest of the world unto himself. How was that going to happen? How was he going to do it? How was he going to bring the Gentiles to himself? See, Jesus had said to the, the Samaritan woman that salvation comes from the Jews. He came to his own, the Bible says. That is to the Jews. In fact, when he sent the disciples out to preach, he was emphatic that they should not go to the Gentiles. Don't go and preach to them. Go and preach 
So the kingdom of God is near. But don't go to the Gentiles. This one was not said by Peter. It was said by Jesus himself. See, not that they were not in a salvation plan. But the scripture says in Isaiah that the nations will rally to him. So he said, You don't go. They will come to me. They will come to me. They will come themselves. They will come themselves. Let me remind you again Isaiah chapter 11. Verse 10. Isaiah 11 10. In, in that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him. So the nations will come to him. That is why he says, Don't go to them. Because it has been said of me that they will come to me. And scripture cannot be broken. So don't go to them. See, please permit me. Please permit me to open up this scripture in John chapter 12. See, in John chapter 12, Jesus has raised Lazarus in chapter 11. And the raising of Lazarus was a miracle of a kind. Lazarus it published Jesus. And as a result, people, all people, including Gentiles, sought to see him. You see, after the, 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 the raising from the dead of Lazarus, the fame of Christ uh, went everywhere. Yes, and people wanted to see him. So let's read from verse 17. John chapter 12. Now the, the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the dead and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. And then Krofukua many people because they had heard that he had performed this sign went out to meet him so the pharisees said to one another see this is getting nowhere Look how the whole world has gone after him. This is from the Pharisees. The whole world has gone after him. Because the nations are supposed to rally after him. Now there was some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethesda in Galilee with a request. Say, they said, We would like to see Jesus. We would like to see Jesus. We too, we want to see him. Philip went to tell Andrews. Philippo, Babekachre, Andrea. <laughs> because that was some kind of a record. You want to see the Messiah? You are a Gentile. You want to see the rabbi? Can you see the rabbi? No, you can't. So Philip went to see Andrews. Then Andrews and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Verse 18. 
very truly I tell you. Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Now, was, was this supposed to be the response? Now, what are no Say people want to see you. It is either let them come or don't let them. Come. Why are you saying that the hour has come? Then you know, don't do for me to be glorified. So let's go back to Isaiah. Chapter eleven. It's Verse ten. Again. In those days, the root of Jesse will stand up as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him. And his resting place will be glorious. Did you hear that he said, the hour has come for me to be glorified? Then he did it and they said, in, in that day, and I and see what no I that Saddam. That is when the Gentiles come looking for him. The Lord will stretch out the hand the second time. And he is saying, Jesus is saying that it is now that they are coming after me. It means that the time has come. Come for me to be glorified. And unless a kernel of wheat falls down and dies, it remains just a single seed. But when it dies, it produces many seeds. Now he's talking about his death. His death. You see, these Gentiles, these Greeks, two things was a barrier to their seeing the Messiah. That is why they were requesting, we, too, we want to see him. The first one was circumcision. You see, if you are not circumcised, it means you are not, you are not a Jew. Even at the time of Hitler, well, Hitler, the pencil. When they were looking for the Jews, brother, what we heard you for? Me. When they caught you and you're a man, say what you now you're very man. And they wanted to find out whether you are a Jew. Now, person who say we're a Jew, now it was very simple. Now, they are the crew They only pulled down your pants. I said, well, you will be talking for. And that was all. Now, well, yes, I will be. <laughs> whether you are a Jew or you're not. Say we're a Jew, now now we're Jew. It was simple. Now, so that small oppression. It is that you may take it to made a certain people belong to God. And these Greeks, circumcision was a barrier to them. The second one was the law. See, the law separated Israel as a people of God. But Jesus' answer is that when I die, I will rise again. And all this writing that is against the people, I will nail it on the cross as chapter 2 verse 22 and 23 and 24 this man onwara was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead free him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep his hold on him you, you killed him he was buried but God raised him from the dead because it was impossible for death to keep his hold on him you see this action of raising Jesus from the dead. It is Paul who explains it better. See, he made us know that it was not 
just an easy something. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 19 and 20. And his incomparably great power for us who believe now Paul is going to describe the power now so for Paul Abba, the is that to me says now. that power is the same as the mighty strength move on to verse 20 he exerted now to say that God exerted strength <laughs> then, then you see that the opposition was strong when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms so when they buried him God exerted strength he stretched off his hand the second time. And this one is to drop in all the Gentiles. The first one was to bring deliverance to Israel. But this second one that Christ was raised from the dead was to bring the other nations to himself. Peter was not going to feed just the Jewish Christians. But the Gentiles were included. Colossians 2 13. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh God made you alive with Christ he gave us all our he forgave us all our sins having cancelled the charge of our legal indebtedness which stood against us and condemned us he has taken it away nailing it to the cross and having disarmed the powers and authorities he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them by the cross so all the law that was against the Gentiles on the cross he nailed it on the tree and that paved the way for the Greeks for the Ghanaians for, for the Chinese, China for, for the Americans, America for, for everyone to come to him. But he did this now, oh yes, uh, by stretching out his hand the second time. Now, so what is the nature of the sheep Peter was supposed to feed? Now, number one, Peter was not going to feed just the Jewish Christians. Now, Peter and Konyane. But the Gentile was supposed to feed was not just Jews but the Gentiles as well. Number two, a new community which is multicultural, multiracial multinational a new community which is multicultural multiracial multinational number three this community is the church of God is the church of God so Peter was supposed to feed this complex feed all the world feed as many as will give their life to Jesus it doesn't matter where they are coming from this is the church of God feed my sheep as 20 keep watch over yourself and all the flock with the Holy Spirit has made you overseers be shepherds of the church of God which he bought with his own blood 
So God bless us all. I pray that elders will arise and know the complexity of the work and want to feed the flock of God who accept people as they come to the church regardless from which tribe they are from in the church there is no error there is no Asante. Asante there is no Fanti. Fanti it is multiracial. Multicultural. Multinational. All of us are his. And the elders are supposed to feed them. Which food will meet all these days? I don't want to end the broadcast without giving you the opportunity to give your life to Jesus. If you will, just bow down your heads wherever you are. And because you need to be part of this community called the Church of God. If you want to give your life to Jesus, please repeat this after me. Dear Lord, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. And today I repent of my sins. And I accept Jesus as Lord. That the Messiah will be my Lord forever. Amen. Amen. If you have prayed this simple prayer, I want you to know that you are born again. Join a good church because you have become part of the church of God. Go there and be fair so that you be productive and beneficial to the kingdom of God and to this planet. God bless us all.
begin to worship God for the privilege that he has called us of coming to himself. He has stretched forth his hand a second time. In principle, and the nations are all gathering. We are running to him. The suit of David. Oh, oh let's worship you. Let's worship you. That he has stretched for his hands. That we are able to come to him. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We glorify you. And in our nation, you have stretched your hands. Praise your name. All nations shall lift you on high. All nations shall declare of your glory, of your power. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus we cannot thank that you in that Lord. Strength, by stretching forth your hands, we all, it was a hand that from was the east, from the west, from the south, from the north, indeed are drawing us to you. Oh Lord, we thank you. We thank you that we never merited, but you have called us. You have chosen us. You have selected us. And there is no barrier. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I enter the basu, I enter the basu. Sir, enter the basu, I am a man of the basu. I enter the basu, I am a son. I enter the basu, I am a man of the basu. Thank you, Jesus. I enter the basu, I enter the basu, I am a man of the basu. And you, you are my sorry. Kuni ni asori. God will build his church. The church of God will not be shaken. In the name so of Jesus. Will not move. Yes, so and you are the temple of God. You ought to be able to stand. And nothing will move you out of the new community. Out of the new community. The church of God. May the Lord build us. May the Lord build us. Strong and firm. In this church. In this new community. Let's give the praise to the Lord. The foundation of the church. Is Christ himself. Is Christ himself. That he will stand. Now what to make? Now 
We want to stand, oh God, in this new community that you have brought us in. Our foundation is Christ, oh God. The solid rock we stand, oh God. All other trials, oh God, is sinking. Because, Father, oh God, when we stand on you, at our foundation, Lord, nothing will hinder us, oh God, and nothing will stand in our way. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we lift up our voice, oh God, and pray the Lord your hand over your head. In the name of Jesus, rise up, oh God, and give us the capacity to stand. In the name of Jesus, Lord, in the will of God, and now as of God, in the name of Jesus, I am para Thank you. Thank you, Lord. That when you stretch forth your hands the second time, oh Jesus, you'll be able to draw people from all nations, mm. all tribes, yes, all kingdoms, all, all races, mm. and we are all running unto you. Mm. Jesus our Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus our Savior. Jesus our, Jesus, Savior. our Redeemer. We thank you for the gift of salvation Amen. that we have received mm. and we have become a part mm. of this new community. Come we please. pray, oh Lord, that as elders will be able to feed your church, Amen. feed your lamp, Amen. transform them, oh God, in Jesus name. with your power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus into the name. image you want. Amen. Lord, help us. Amen. Lord, help us. Amen. That we will not put barriers. Mm. We will not put limitations yes, Lord. into the way of the people you are calling in to yourself. Name of Jesus. But we will allow ourselves mm. as vessels to draw men mm. to your kingdom. Amen. We thank you. We bless you. We continue to pray, Lord, for our dear chairman, Lord, that you continue to fill him Amen. and use him yes, in Lord. this time for the work given unto him. Jesus. Bless him and strengthen him Amen. for the journey ahead, oh God. Amen. We thank you today and forevermore. Even so, you have drawn unto yourself tonight. Establish them in this new community. Amen. May they be able to stand Amen. and stand for the rest of their Amen. lives. In Jesus' name, have you prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are grateful to God for how far he has brought us. And once again, we are grateful to our dear chairman for such great in-depth insight. Intricately weaving out God's word and helping us to be able to understand the concept of feeding God's sheep. That God has created a new community that is multicultural, multiracial, and multinational. And our Father concluded that what kind of food will be served this complex community? But we are grateful that as we go through this series, I am sure we will know the kind of food. <laughs> Hallelujah. So once again, we are grateful to all who join us 
on our various platforms, those who were on our chairman's page, aps.ericnyameche, those who joined us at PENTVGH, and then those who joined us at the COPHQ, and those who connected on YouTube, as well as those who were watching us on Atinka TV, and then those who connected on Pen TV. It's all about Jesus. We are so grateful for this awesome evening we have had. And so once again, we are looking forward to meeting ourselves once again here, if Jesus tarries next week, same time, to receive this great insight from the Lord. God bless you and stay safe in Jesus' name. Amen.